Hello everyone and welcome to part 6 of this course that we have and so far we have come a good way and uh, the first thing in this video that I'm going to do is before anything else so we we can now send a request to uh, backend from front end to backend and send the word that we have but now we need to have a database of all English words for some for two reasons first of all we need a um, database of all words to choose a word. And secondly, when user types something here, user cannot type anything. For example, this thing that I just typed is not actually a real word. We need to validate that and see if it is actually a real word. And the only way to do that is to have a database of all English words. And this is what we are going to do. If you search for database for all English words, I searched a little before uh, starting this video and I end up choosing this one. Uh, this is a GitHub repository and it is uh, it has some files inside this. For example, words.txt, words.zip and so many things. For example, uh, I think the difference between words and word alpha is that uh, word alpha is only those words that they have characters inside that and there's no number inside them. Uh, for that matter, for example, if we take a look at words.txt and wordalpha.txt, the text file for them, and since it's a very big file, we need to first, first click on view raw and view raw in order to see the raw file of that. And since it's a very big file, it might take a little while to... So you can see the words like second, 3D, 3M, they are considered as a word here. So this is not what I want, the words.txt. I want word alpha. The word alpha is only those words which and they uh, do not have, uh, they come like 3D is not a word alpha. So this is what I'm going to continue with. This alpha.txt thing that uh, we have here. And we can go ahead and download and the zip things and things like that. And the JSON format of that, the TXT format of that. So there are so many different ways for that. So I'm going to save this file, hit control S. And for now, I'm going to save that to uh, Wordle. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking where to save that. I'm going to save that inside Wordle database and create a new folder for myself. For example, I call it raw. Raw. I call it raw. For example, this raw is for uh, raw files that I have. For example, like this words alpha.txt. I'm, I'm going to save this file there. And uh, if we go inside our Wordle project, inside our database, inside our raw folder, we are going to have this. Is, this is the words alpha.txt, and you can see this is a 4 megabyte file that now we have. And also, if you take a look at this, we can see now inside uh, the Git section, we have a new file here. And this is the file that we are going to use in order to create a new uh, table uh, some we may we might create more than one table from this all of these texts that we have we take a look at this lot of text we might create a table only for five character words and we might create a table and tell them for example this is a word it has three characters and things like that so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new migration php artisan make migration and the migration that i'm going to create i let's have a file name for that the file name i'm going to create word related tables and i am going to pass in create and i'm call it for example words yeah create words i'm going to create uh, a words table and here it is and hit control J to un um, uh, uh, unminimize it and let's open file here close this one and this is the file that we have so the first thing that it does is creates a you know, words table and um, we are going to add some more uh, columns to this it has three columns by default one is ID which is auto increment the things that we, we all have for the uh, MySQL data tables and timestamps for the uh, created and uh, created at and updated at uh, of the 
words. So now I'm thinking about it. Do we really need timestamps for this one? For example, do we need to t keep track of these words when they are created and when they are updated at? Uh, I, if we uh, turn it off, turn it, I, I mean, uh, remove this one from here, we need to change the model in future to tell, because Laravel by default thinks that every table has these two columns. If we are going to clean that, we are we need we do need to tell the model in future. So we need to have that in mind to tell the model, hey, hey, model for this specific table, we are not going to have that created at an updated at uh, columns that uh, we usually have. So this is something to have in mind that we need to do. So other than ID, we are going to have a table call that uh, the type of this thing is going to be string. And uh, each table is going to have a, for example, the type of it is a string. But what are we going to call this? We are going to call it, for example, uh, word, okay, the word itself. And uh, we are going to create an, another column, and that's called unsigned small integer. Unsigned small integer is a, it's, it's only positive numbers because we are saying it's unsigned and we are going to say small integer. It's not going to be that long. And the t it, this is the type of the column that we are going to use. And it is going to be, uh, for example, length. We are going to call it length, the length of the food. So we are going to say, hey, we have a correct character, for example, test, for example, character test, and the length of this character is going to be four and store the length of that. And we may want to actually create more columns for this one if we want to, and this is it. And also I am going to create another table and I'm going to call it five digit words or five character words, hmm? five character words. The five character words only, uh, I'm, uh, and you will see why I am creating two tables for, uh, for these things. So n since this is only five character words, so we are going to clean that because we do not need to have the length because the length of the, all of them are, is, go are, uh, is going to be five. So this is it. Th these are two tables that I'm going to create. So, and I said, Whatever that we do in up method of migration, we need to do exact the, the exact opposite in the down method. So we are going to create another drop if exists, but not words, but five character words. So it at the up it creates two tables, but at the down it drops two tables. So uh, let's hit Control J, and we are going to say PHP artisan migrate in order to migrate these new changes and create these new tables in database. And of course, sure enough, if we go inside our database, inside our PHP and my admin, so we need to type localhost, PHP my admin. So sure enough, and I have no password for this. And sure enough, we are going to see that inside our Wordle, we are going to have for sure two new tables. And these are the two new tables that we just created five character words and all the worlds that we have. So now I'm going to create a new task. A lot of it allows us to create new tasks for ourselves. For example, you've seen that so many times I use, for example, PHP artisan make migration, PHP artisan do something, PHP artisan do something. You can create our own custom PHP artisan commands. And the way that we can do that, we can actually say PHP artisan. And, and again, I need to remind you that I have set a shortcut for PHP artisan. So that's why rather than using PHP artisan, I can only say, write down PA because previously I've set a shortcut for that. So we're going to write PA or PHP artisan make command and we are going to create a new command. And the name of the command that I'm going to use is going to be actually, for example, fill five character words in DB. It's the name of the command that I'm going to continue with. And if we take a look at uh, this thing here now, you can see that now there is a new 
a file created and you can see that the path of the file is actually so let's open the file here and this is the file that is just created and you can see the file is in, is inside so that we can see that here inside our app console commands we have that app console commands we have some things and you can see these are the uh, things that we have. So we can write a command description for ourselves if we want to. For example, the description of this command is uh, this command uh, fills five character words table. Words table. And you can see the signature is PHP artist app, all these things that we have. I'm going to create a sh sh uh, PHP artisan, uh, call it five, PHP five words. Yeah. And now if I run the PHP artisan app five words, so rather than this, for example, everything that we have written inside the handle function is going to be executed. For example, for test, I can say echo yes. For example, echo yes. Everything is going to be executed. So if I write down PHP artisan app and the signature that I chose, the signature that I chose was five words, app five words. Now, everything inside the handle command is going to be executed for sure. And so this is it. So this is how we can actually create uh, uh, custom commands if we want to. And also, we can schedule these commands if we want to. For example, uh, imagine that you we want to create a command that executes every six hours or every 10 minutes. Uh, we can actually do that inside kernel uh, sorry, kernel. We uh, in previous versions of Laravel, it was in kernel, and I actually heard from some of my friends that it's changed now in Laravel 11, and we will see that uh, how we can actually. But have in mind that we can actually uh, schedule these commands if you want to. So uh, now that we have created this command, the first thing that we need to do is the, uh, we need to uh, read that file that we had, for example, we had a raw file here, words alpha.txt. We need to read that file. So how can we read that file? Hmm? For example, how can we read the uh, uh, open this txt file and read the contents of that file? So this is the challenge that we are facing and how can we do that? Uh, in order to do that, we first need to use a, a class called file which is uh, in this uh, which is located here and we can use it and uh, all these things that start with illuminate are those uh, who are provided by laravel itself and we can use it and uh, now that we use this file class there's a method called lines which we can call on this and this lines accepts uh, an argument and uh, that's the path of the file uh, that we need to give it to it. And uh, I will write this, uh, prepare this path variable, don't worry. But when we provide this path out, then we have something called each. There's a method called each. We can call that on this line. And this uh, accepts an anonymous function at first start. For example, the anonymous function looks something like this function. We'll write function. Okay, and this function, this anonymous functions, gives us something that we can call it line. We can call it whatever that we want. We can call it John, whatever that. But it's more convenient to use line uh, because uh, this thing reads the file that we are providing, reads it line by line. Okay, and uh, gives us the content of each line inside this line variable and we can actually take a look at this line variable and see what this is we can dump and die this line what is this but before we execute this code we need to provide this uh, path argument here before that so we need to create a path argument and the path argument is actually the way that we can actually reach to that uh, word alpha txt file that we have. So in order to reach that file, we can see that we, we are now inside uh, commands console app, okay? If we, if we start from 
deer it deer is actually is something that um, it's 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 a PHP thing that gives us the correct current directory that this file is located in. So we are here inside. If we want to reach uh, this, for for example, where is that database folder? Yes, this is database folder words. If we want to reach to that words alpha text from here, we first need to uh, back three times. For example, we we must say dot 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 dot. Dot, dot. So we have uh, three backs, for example, and get, uh, come back to this folder console, from console back to app, and from app back to app to Wordle, and now we can go inside database folders. Database folders. So we need to have three backs, okay? Because imagine that in order to not to get messed up in these circumstances, let's do it like this in order for you to understand this thing better. We are now inside app console commands okay in order to reach that we need to first one time say back one time two times back three times back and now after three times back we need to go inside databases and then go inside raw so that's why we have that three times back here you need to go inside database raw and get the words alpha dot txt and now that we have that and provide this and now it goes ahead and reads this words alpha line by line and so the first thing that we are going to have is going to be a for sure so let's save this and hit control j and uh, let's, let's clean this thing everything here and run uh, the uh, php artisan app five words command and see what happens i mean you can see sure enough this is the A, which is actually the first thing that we are uh, seeing here, and this is uh, it. So, uh, the line actually is the, uh, as you can see, is it's what we have here. And actually, let's give it something. For example, if we say strlen, what does strlen? strlen is a PHP function which gives us the length of that uh, particular variable that we are going to give it to him for example let's run this command one more time and you can see it says it says a and it says the length of this is going to be a so it reads everything line by line so now that it reads everything line by line we can now create items inside database we can use model but before using model i'm going to introduce you with something called the db db is actually uh, we can actually use it just like this use db just like this and uh, when we use db we can now uh, create and insert items in database for example i'm going to say create a new variable called data okay data and say that data is going to be an empty array for start so now we are going to say uh, so when we created that five words characters thing that we had inside our database migrations so you can see that we created a five characters table and it had a word and also we created a words table and it had a word and it had a length just like that so okay so i am going to do this for now we am i am going to create just only that uh, five character table thing that we had so i'm going to do this i'm going to say length equals for example length length equals to strlen this line strlen of this line okay now we have the length and now we can say if this length equals to five if it's so it's a five character word then we need to add this to data so we are going to say data is going to have a new thing and the new thing that we are going to give it to, to this is actually is going to be an array of all the possible things that it can have. For example, if we wanted to uh, create uh, for the other thing here, we need to have we needed to have two things inside our array: one word, one length. But for this one, we only need to have one thing inside our array, and that's only word. Uh, and ID will be taken care of automatically so we are going to say word equals to the so now rather than using line here i think let's use the character word i think word is better than line because every line is actually the word so now we can say word word 
or you can you can remember uh, that the compact actually does the same thing for example if you write compact compact word it's actually the same thing these two lines so i'm going to continue with compact so add this to data and now we have uh, everything in, uh, in our data now that we have a, a data which is an array of array uh, now we can actually use db okay and insert and we, we are going to call the insert method on the db and these are the data that you need to insert okay but to insert it to which table where to insert that so we are, we need to say db table we specify the table name and the table name that we are going to use is five character words and we are going to say insert this data and we are going to say e echo all items created successfully okay if we uh, go on uh, just before we uh, commit anything to database and things let's dump and die the data here okay and and not data let's dump and die the count of data because the data itself is going to be a big thing and let's just uh, dump and die the count of data if we dump and die the count of data we are going to get a little bit surprised here probably because let's run the last command here php artisan app five words and let's see uh, what this dump and die count of data gives us and it says zero and you might think okay why zero because we have a data here it has an array here uh, and some items are going to insert it inside this array and this count should not be zero and you might think that okay it's probably not entering inside this if a statement so that's why this uh, nothing ever ever will be added to this data but you are wrong if you think so if we come back here and dump and die for example uh, word here for example say word you can see that it actually sometimes does enter inside this if statement and you can see for those character those words which are five characters it actually does enter that the reason is uh, each variable has a scope for example when we define a variable inside a function for example we no longer have access to that variable inside another function each thing has a scope so this data here is actually different with this data here so we actually need to say use use dollar data and actually this solves uh, half of our problem and and the reason that it solves half of a problem it's actually now using this data variable so okay it's using that data variable and actually enters everything inside that data variable and everything is great but again if we run P, uh, php artisan f5 you can see still we are receiving zero as the count of data because the way that we are passing our data inside this anonymous function is called pass by value if we put an and sign bef behind that it's actually uh, passed by reference and anything that happens to this data inside this anonymous function will be applied to this data here the reason that we always see the zero here inside this dump and die here because always this this data refers to this data the data goes inside this method inside this anonymous function changes and when we come back from this each method and come back and exit from this function now the data comes back to but now that we are passing that by refer reference inside that data here now it's going to be different and we no longer are going to see zero as the count of the data so you can see now the count is actually 1592 uh, 15, words we have that start that are five characters so now that we have this data are actually rather than dumping die that we are going to insert these data inside our five character words and let's run this command one more time and see what happens and actually if we come back uh, all items created successfully we see that message and let's come back inside phpMyAdmin hit refresh and see as you can see now we have 
a uh, database and you can see uh, here we have all those 15,000 items inside that. So, okay, this is great. And as you can see now, everything is working correctly. And we can also go ahead and create uh, and fill all the uh, items for that another table that we had. Do you remember we had another table called words and this, this was supposed to have all the words for word and length and things like that. So actually let's, let's do that one as well. So, since we already created these five character words thing that we had, so I'm going to create a new command and create, uh, so let's create another command. And this command is creating for all words. So we can see PHP artisan, again, make command all words. We are going to say fill all words in DB in db so we had that thing here so let's do this one and here we said inside this other thing we said this command fills this for the description here we are going to say this command fills all words table okay and uh, it wasn't all words i think it was words table so we can say all words. Okay. And for this one, we, we previously used another command, for example, app five words. And here we are going to use app, for example, all words. Okay. And the same thing is going to happen here. We are going to copy these things, but we are going to have some changes rather than here. So this is going to be read that. We are going to loop through that. And here, we are going to create the length and we don't care if the length is five or length is whatever. We are going to add two things, one word and the other one is going to be length. So this compact actually creates an array of two items and one of them is going to be word and one is going to be length and the exact same thing that we need, word and length. And the ID will be taken care of automatically. So now we have the data here and it's passed by reference, everything is okay, for, but rather than using five character words, we are going to create that inside words table and say all items created successfully. So this is the command that we are going to run. So we are going to say php artisan and that app all words and uh, it says file did not found and sure enough yes file is not going to be found because we forgot to use them so let's use this file and db that we had just like this previous things that we had so let control j again and run this uh, previous command again and sure enough it's going to work this time and did it work or not yeah, it's just exhausted because it's going to be very, very uh, heavy. So, so as you can see, allowed memory is exceeded. So it's uh, the, uh, we need to change our PHP configurations for this one. As you can see, uh, since uh, the, this thing that we are going to execute is, is very heavy, as you can see, uh, how, 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 how many bytes is this one? So we can actually change this one. Uh, there's some uh, changes that we need to apply to our uh, env file. So as you can see, if we search for this thing here, we can see there's something that we need to change. For example, uh, we can use that for with ini set memory limit negative one. This one, uh, is, uh, yes, it says it's not a proper solution. The reason that it's not proper solution, uh, and it says, please don't do that. And okay, um, yes, so the bottom line is that uh, it exceeds our memory limit, uh, and that's why we, we face this problem. We can actually, there are, uh, this is one bad, ba bad way to solve that for sure, and there's also some other ways we can increase the memory limit and things like that, but, uh, I think we need to have another uh, approach. 
And the another approach that I'm talking about, for example, we can say f f uh, we can first uh, we need to break our uh, query because we have one uh, extremely heavy query and one extremely heavy command that we are going to execute. So the reason that the previous command executed successfully the five character digit words because it was a smaller and we managed to execute that. But for this one, we need to break our uh, insertion in order to uh, fix that. For example, we can actually first of all create, uh, for example, we can actually create, uh, we say a step one, create all those characters that start with A. And after that, create all those characters that start with B. So rather than executing all of them in one command, we can actually execute that in 26 different commands and break that to smaller pieces so that way. So we can say uh, all items with A cre created successfully. All items are starting with B created successfully. And A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and things like that. So I think this is the better way. We actually break our um, in insertion so uh, our command becomes uh, is not going to be that heavy. So the first thing that we need to uh, create is to generate an array from A to Z PHP. So this is the first thing that we are going to do. The, how can we do that? Alphas range A to Z. So I think this is it. So we can say alphas is from range A to Z. So we can say that. Okay. And let's dump and die alphas and see what they are. And uh, yeah. So here let's hit control J again and say CLS clean that and run this thing. And you can see, yeah, we have that all characters that we wanted. Okay. So now we can actually loop through these alphas for each, we can say for each alpha as char, so as a character, so so for each one of them, and we are going to create these things here. We are going to move them inside this thing here, and here, and here, here, things like that. So okay, and here is it all items starting starting with uh, for example a and the character here the character is going to be a or b or c or thing whatever that is uh, created successfully and we can say control j and it's from a to z let's create from a small a to a small z because all the words inside that alpha thing that we have start with small characters as i believe if i'm not wrong as you can see take a let's take a look at that file one more time to make sure if that word alpha as you can see all of them all of them are with small cases yeah all of them are small cases yeah so there's no capital inside that so that's why we are going to create from small a to small z let's one more time do this one and let's hit control J again. And here we must see from small, yeah, from small A to small Z. Okay. So uh, now the only thing that remains is that we need to use an if statement. This uh, word and length is now that is being added to data every time. We are going to say that if, okay, if some conditions meet, then you are going to do this thing that we have here. And what is that condition? Is that we need, we need to check if this word starts with this character or not. So there's a function in PHP, and I think it was str starts with, I think it was this function. Yes, let's check this str starts with. So inside, uh, if we want to check a function as, or something, we can actually use PHP artisan tinker. It's not a bad time to uh, get familiar with P with tinker. In tinker, we actually actually check various commits, uh, 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 PHP uh, commands and things like that. For example, I can say uh, I want to check if how this function works. For example, I can say hello, 
and say for example x okay x and it says false because hello does not start with x so and say hello starts with h and it says true and let's use a small h and it says false so this is actually the thing that i want so this start with actually works completely fine so let's type exit and now we are uh, we are exited from php artist and thinker thing that we have so uh, we can now start to let's hit control j to minimize that so we can say if a string starts with we can say if it's this word starts with this character then you need to add this to data and loop through that so it uh, technically takes a bit longer and uh, we can actually custom as uh, rewrite this somehow that uh, actually this executes much faster but uh, we are not going to explain some because this video is getting long and long and longer and we are not going to ex uh, spend that much time to make it better but it just works now so now all items starting with a created successfully b created successfully and all the things like that and probably mm -hmm. So this thing, uh, that uh, this INI memory limit is something that we are going to clean and not use. I don't know, when did we paste that there? I, <laughs> I don't even remember. When did we paste that there? So uh, because we, uh, we are decreasing that uh, memory limit thing that we had here. So here we can actually uh, say, for example, before inserting anything, let's uh, count dollar data, okay? and the character thing that we have so let's uh, let's hit control j again so that thing is started N not php artist and thinker sorry uh, php artist and thinker is not what i am going to continue with sorry let's clean this thing here and uh, open another one so uh, let's use pa uh, let's we have that yeah all words so if we run this thing, so we have an error, let's see, undefined variable char. So of course, undefined variable char because uh, we're not using that char here. So let's use data and also char. So data is passed by reference, but the char is passed by value because we don't care about uh, the char. So let's come back here. Let's, let's, let's use control J again. So here, all words. And we are going to wait. And now, as you can see, there are 25,000 uh, words that start with A. And now here, so this is it. Now we, we are going to clean this thing here. And also, so uh, we need to change PHP max execution time uh, as well. Because you can see for sure this code is probably going to take more than one minute to be executed. So... Uh, there's something we can sa actually come here and search uh, PHP max execution time and we need to increase that okay so how to increase max execution time in PHP and you can see this is INI thing so we can do that actually temporary with INI thing and this for instance time yeah so let's use this one. So we use an INI set temporary here. Before anything else, we are going to set an INI. In, and the max execution time for this command is going to be uh, 30. Uh, for, for default, I think, is uh, 60 seconds. But it's, it's, it's increasing that to 300 seconds. So let's use that for, for example, let's use that for example, uh, rather than six let's use that make that to 600 so now it's 10 minutes so the max execution time is now at 10 minutes so hit control j again and now let's cls clean everything and now let's pa app all words and see what is going to happen so the first thing that we are we need to see we see all items starting with a created successfully all items uh, we, it, it, it was better to have a backslash n there yeah, because the backslash and it makes it to go to the next line. So I'm not going to save that to change that, but 
So now you can see we no longer see that allocated memory thing that we had because it is creating those things with segment by segment. And it says, for example, we have that word, it has two characters, we have this word, it has three characters, and it is creating everything uh, step by step. Okay, now as you can see, it's on G, it's on K, and actually here we can actually make that str to upper if we want to. Uh, for example, this H and things like that. Uh, but anyway, this backslash N was more important than every uh, than all of them. So we are, we are going to wait a little. N is created, O is created, N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z, and it it is going to finish its job and uh, it's going to create the database. So okay, this is it. That's uh, almost. Uh, so we are going to wait a little for this one to finish. But now we saw we faced an error. What? We faced an error. It seems that we faced an error. So, yeah, it's not showing us all the things that we had. Yeah, we, we, we faced an error. Let's see what was the error and <coughs> how many of them is now is created. Let's see. It went to start of the H. Let's go to the final, to O. Is it still working or not? It's finished. And as you can see, it says that there are, yes, 22, uh, 2021, if we refresh, yeah, 20. So it's a stopped now. At the O, it is stopped, O, Z, and O for the P, it faced an error for the P. So, and since because it was so big, it actually is exited for this one. So what can we do for now? Let's create from P to Z uh, to continue this one. And let's execute this piece of code inside our terminal rather than this. So go inside our Wordle and open this in terminal because uh, I want to see the full length of the error. So let's run this thing again. So it's going to start from P this time because uh, we changed that from uh, A to P. So let's wait a little because the previous time it faced an error while it was trying to insert all those uh, P things. So wait a little, but I think the P thing is very heavy. So that's the reason it's facing that error. So let's see all the error, eliminate query exception, general error. So prepared a statement contains too many placeholders. So let's copy this error because I've never seen um, this too many placeholders things. So too many placeholders. So let's search this error and says DB table insert D array chunk solve this issue by array chunk. DB table insert D. There's a limit in placeholders. So there's a limit. Um, let's see we are facing so many different limits uh, that is making our job so hard. So for array chunk data yeah, so it's chunks the data. So actually, this was a better way now that I think about it. So there's something called array chunk, which uh, chunks the array and creates so many different chunks and, and does the trick. For example, here you can see uh, that uh, w we created those chunks like that, but also we can create the chunks like this one. We can say if for example, let's use a chunk here. So this is this the chunk here. That it, do you know what this chunk does? Let's copy this thing here for each thing. It's going to insert this. So we are going to say chunk, and we are going to use chunk here as well. So db table name insert table name is going to be words. Okay. Uh, for example, if we have uh, 10,000 
items inside this data array, it's going to execute that uh, 10 times for each 1000 item that we have. So the reason that we faced an error for the P because the, for the P it had a lot of characters and a lot of characters and it faced an error. So uh, we can use array chunk in order to break that into pieces. So this is actually it was better way than this A to Z thing that we work. But since we uh, started with this A to Z, we need to continue with this A to Z. So that's why we need to do that. So let's save this one and we are going to uh, yeah, let's use this. Uh, but rather than using a thousand, we are going to make that, for example, mm, for example, 10,000. Because 10,000 chunk, chunk, I think it's something that it can handle for sure. So let's clean this thing here and run this thing one more time. So the ch chunk is 10,000. So if the items inside data become get greater than 10,000. It, for example, for the P, imagine for the P we had, for example, 15,000. So it f the first time it runs for the 10,000 10, of them and then 5,000 later. So that's the way that it's doing that. So this chunk is actually something that it was better. Uh, we wanted, to, we could have used it from the uh, start this chunk thing. The thing is so big, we, we could create it all the data, and after creating all the data, we could use the chunk and create it and insert all the data chunk by chunk inside the database so that we do not face that error thing that we had. So this is it. Everything is created for the Z as well. So I'm going to get that back to A for you guys uh, to use it inside our database and with characters. So this is a good. And I think uh, this alpha thing is wasn't that horrible because here we can see uh, everything for A, everything for B, everything for C created and it feels better kind kind of. So this is it. That's enough for this session. So I'm going to commit all the changes that we have. The reason that I commit all the changes is that for you, uh, you can actually access them in GitHub more easily. For example, for future, if you go inside my GitHub in your daily codes, uh, GitHub, and in my re repositories, for, for example, for Wordle, you can in future go, for example, inside various commits, for example, here, here you can see I have seven commits. You can go inside various commits and take a look at my project. For example, this is how the project looked at part one. This is how the project looked at part four. We can click on that and see the codes of the project just like part four. So at the end of each session, I'm going to commit my changes. So as you can see, the last commit that I had, if I hit git log here, the last commit is part five here. So I'm going to create a new commit called part six so and commit this and uh, after i'm uploading this into github then at future you can see an option here for example for part six and you can see click on that and see all the codes as the part six for me for yourself so this is it that's enough for this session uh, so we took care of the database now in this session uh, now our database is ready we have all the words character if you want to use in future and we have a table for all the five character words and this is something that also we can use in future so this is it that's enough for this session